Hi, I'm Nate, and welcome to my blog, Everybody Hates Nate. This is my first video. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about something that's actually quite important to me, and that is carbon taxes. We need them. We need them to be significant. We need to feel the impact of these taxes when we buy gasoline, when we think about whether we even need a car, where we live, how big our, should our house be, to, you know, should I put on an extra sweater? I mean, all these things need to be a factor when we are buying products that emit carbon. That is why we need a significant carbon tax. Now, the problem with doing what I just uh, explained is that people who are already struggling would be significantly burdened by such a tax. That's why, and this isn't my idea, <laughs> this is an idea supported by over 3,400 economists who are part of something called, or who signed a statement for something called the Climate Leadership Council, these 3,400 economists all have agreed in what is probably the largest consensus in the history of the entire discipline is that revenue neutral carbon taxes are the single best thing we can do as a society to combat climate change. Now we can get into why that is on a, a sort of different point, but the, the, the issue here is that economists, especially natural resource economists, are the experts in the field of how do we nudge human behavior such that we reduce our carbon or reduce our carbon footprint and potentially even take carbon out of the atmosphere. And the consensus in the field is revenue neutral carbon taxes. This is actually similar to, or this reminds me of when um, environmentalists said, we can't ignore the consensus of the scientists. Climate change is real. We need to do something about it. This is the same thing. Climate change is real. We need to do something about it. The people who actually study this stuff, economists, have come to the overwhelming conclusion that revenue neutral climate taxes are the, are the thing that we need. But we just can't seem to get that anywhere. And the funny thing is, when I first learned about revenue neutral carbon taxes, I think around 2007, 2008, uh, I was in college, and the natural resource economics professor who uh, um, was, was explaining carbon taxes to us all, uh, who also signed that letter uh, that's in the CPC, I'll put a link to that uh, below, uh, sort of worried, it's like, you know, the problem is, is that people who are skeptical about uh, climate change are going to stand in our way. It's not, it's politically tough to raise taxes uh, in general. Uh, and that, you know, the conservatives or, or Republican leading people in our society are going to be these big blockers to actually implementing that stuff. And that made a lot of sense. But if we flash forward to today in 2019, it seems to me that one of the biggest blockers of revenue neutral carbon taxes are the environmentalists, the left, Democrats. Um, you know, we had a revenue neutral carbon tax on our ballot here in Washington in 2016, I-732, and it failed. And then we had a non-revenue neutral carbon tax. They called it a fee. They said only polluters would pay, but in reality, it doesn't, like, if only, or if only companies paid rather, not polluters, uh, it wouldn't really be that effective. But at the end of the day, it was a carbon tax. It wasn't revenue neutral, and it also failed. Um, but the but the, the thing is, is that, that the left is very, very, in this state, and I have a blog post about it, I'll link to it, is very hostile to revenue neutral carbon taxes. And this just gets to the, the key point, and I'm glad to kick off my set of, of videos on my blog about this, which is climate change is about carbon in the atmosphere and other greenhouse gases. It's not about whether we're socialist or, or capitalists. It's not about whether you know, the police are racist or not, which, by the way, I think that the actions of the SPD as police departments across the country uh, are definitely uh, uh, systemically racist and need to be reformed. And it's not that these other social issues are important to me as well. I think, you know, the Seattle, as well as many other places in, in, in America, are too expensive. These social problems are really important. The equity problems are really important. We, we have many problems in our society, but we cannot get caught up in the like you know uh, remaking of our economy from capitalist to socialist in order to combat climate change that's just not the issue the issue is carbon in the atmosphere today i read in the seattle times that you know the that olympia is about to uh, um, authorize a transportation uh, package where there's a small carbon fee i think it's 15 dollars per ton um, and then that some of that money is going to be used to pay for other infrastructure, including car infrastructure. Now, a lot of people on the left, including former mayor Mike McGinn, are furious. And frankly, I, I understand why. Um, we, taxing carbon in order to support car infrastructure 
isn't really like the, I think the goal here is we're not trying to, to nudge people in favor of cars. We're trying to, or at least in my opinion, the goal for any climate policy is how do we, how do we reduce our carbon footprint? And if, as I said, if not actually take carbon out of the air. Um, and it's just mind blowing to me that we can't get a coalition between the left and the centrists or just people who are not dogmatic about it in the middle, who, who want to see climate action, the environmentalists, environmentalists on the left to coalesce around the idea that we should have pretty significant fees and taxes on carbon at a level where it, it impacts consumer choice, uh, but also doesn't hurt them because we're going to give that money back to them in the form of other uh, tax rebates. In Washington, the way we raise taxes, it does seem like the 2016 ballot initiative had the smartest way, which was to give a tax rebate back uh, in the form of lower sales taxes uh, that consumers pay uh, in other areas. But, you know, I just, I'm really worried about the future. We can't, in this reasonably progressive state, I understand it's not that progressive on the other side of the Cascades, but in this liberal state, we can't simply implement the simplest, lowest cost, and I mean in the sense that like a revenue neutral carbon tax is a pretty low impact tax, relatively speaking. Um, it's simple. It's not that hard to administer. It doesn't involve any kind of crazy projections that we're going to give, you know, billions of dollars to some state agency and then they're going to invest it properly. And then we're going to reap these benefits, you know, almost, you know, many years down the line. This is literally like we're going to start nudging if we or rather if we had a revenue neutral carbon tax, we would be pushing the needle forward the second it was implemented. And everybody in our society, in our state of Washington, would start changing the way they think about how they emit carbon, because to do so would cost them money. Uh, and then if we get it right, the tax rebates elsewhere would make sure that people who are struggling to pay bills, who are struggling to make ends meet, aren't being punished if they go to work or heat their homes, you know, especially in places where public transportation options aren't as plentiful as they are here in Seattle. Um, it's, it's just kind of disappointing to read in the newspaper that you know, we're going to put a carbon tax, not for the sake of really helping the environment, because $15 per ton, maybe it goes up. It, 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 the truth is, it's a, it's part of a package that hasn't even been passed yet. But like, you know, I, I think I read in the article in the Times, it was something like, like the total impact is about 14 cents a gallon. Like, that's just not enough. I mean, we need, we need to see dollars, probably. I, there are economists who can probably get into this more specifically, but um, it needs to hurt to emit carbon we're not going to get anywhere. And if we also can't get sidelined into this, you know, social justice issue when it comes to, 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 to climate change, it isn't that there aren't serious social justice problems in this country. There are, there are here in Seattle, housing is too expensive. Uh, um, the police have a serious, you know, <laughs> bias problem. There's bias in real estate, healthcare is too expensive. I mean, there's so many issues, but that's actually why it's so important not to tie climate in with all of these things because climate is totally existential. It's beyond us. It's not about our society. It's not about America. It's not about Seattle. It's about the actual planet. And at the end of the day, the only thing the planet cares about is the part per million of carbon and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and nothing else. So in my first video that I know is, you know, assuming anyone watches it, is going to be upsetting to both uh, conservatives who think climate change is a hoax, uh, people who are afraid of new taxes, but also the left in the sense that they're going to be mad that I'm basically saying climate on the actual nuts and bolts is not a social justice issue. It is in the broad sense. If we do it right, it will provide social justice um, uh, in certain areas. But if we approach climate from a social justice lens first, I think we're going to fail. I think we're going to turn people off. I think we're going to get distracted from the main issue. I think we're going to hurt the environment. And it's going to be a giant blocker in terms of getting something done. So <laughs> this is going to be sort of the tone of these videos and, and of my blog posts. And I have a feeling a lot of people won't like it. And that's why this is Everybody Hates Nate. Have a good one. <laughs>